take you on. It could be tough on your gear. Like we've said, things will never be the same. Bit of a change of plan. I don't know why I'm still shocked all the time. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. It is. I don't know how well you can tell with the stabilization in the GoPro, but the road, considering we've only been up there for about two weeks, is significantly worse yep. than when we came up. Definitely like starting to get my oh, yeah. ego. <laughs> yeah, so the corrugations are forming. Yeah. Um, I, I'm surprised. I, I didn't think it happened so quickly, but I can completely understand now when people say, okay, you're can be tough on your gear yeah because on the way up not too bad but the way back yeah it'd be interesting to see how everything's holding up in the caravan <laughs> <laughs> so we've just pulled up back at the intersection that turns off to Bamaga. I actually had a fair bit of corrugations on that road coming from here it's the only section we sort of haven't driven yet um, and we've just jumped out We're gonna have a bit of lunch toilet break I'll so just do it a little walk around and we've <laughs> Oh, we've lost another garbage bag or a dirty gear bag. This is a good ARB one and one of the clips has broken off and we've obviously dragged it for a bit because we've dragged a hole in the bottom of it. I mean, it's not the worst. I, I should be able to dodge it back up, but that's just a bit annoying. Rest of the van though, going beautifully. No dramas at all. All right, here's our camp for just the night. This is just a free camp. I think it's called the dam or something. We got that. Don't know what it's from. I think it's man-made. It looks like some pushed up mounds. Nice and neat over there, probably from Roadworks. Um, heaps of room, eh? You can drive all the way around it. And we're just parked a little bit back from the water just in case it's crocky. I don't think there would be one in there, but you never know up here. So better to be safe than sorry. Dogs. We'll just keep the dogs away from the water's edge. Hey, Cooper, come this way. Dirty gear bags made it. I just jerry-rigged that. It's just all tied up behind the, the spare wheel. Keeps wanting to move though, eh? Like, keeps wanting to go down a side. So, I think maybe if that one ends up Good. biting the bullet, I'll, um, or biting the dust, whatever the saying is, I don't know. Might get one of those ones that has, um, it's like a half moon bit of canvas that sits over your spare tire so that it can't go anywhere. But anyway, we'll look into that later. We'll make this one last as long as we can. All right, I'm gonna take you inside and just show you what's happened whilst we've been on the road. Look at this. Uh, outside. You're not going in. Back, 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 back. What's happening in here, mate? So much dust. <laughs> not uh, any fault of the DR, like the DRS that we've got. No. It's just... What's happened is, a couple of things. The fence behind the fridge, um, we never cover them up and obviously it can't get any positive pressure there because the fridge is there. So it just sort of sneaks its way in and around the microwave. And in it, these cupboards, because they've got holes, like you see the dust down there, all those cupboards around here have got holes in them for like power leads and stuff. So that's how it gets around. But what happened this time when we were driving, the windows came unlatched, some of them. And so they were flapping around a little bit. Didn't We didn't realise until pretty much the end of driving. So, so either I didn't latch them properly because yeah. they're old style windows I'm not used to or they, they come undone. They are a little bit of a bugger and hard sometimes to latch and we do have some broken latches. So it's not like it's anyone's fault if that's why. <laughs> but still, considering we had <laughs> things open while we were driving, it's not that bad because it was a very, very dusty trip, that one. 
I do have regrets about painting the caravan white. <laughs> <laughs> at this point uh, in my life <laughs> yes. and also the light lounge it looks great when it's clean but it doesn't stay clean very long with kids so yeah but hey we're not doing my head in we're not me. living up here it's not like we're oh no i just can't wait to get back to like you know out of the red dust and just clean it all <laughs> i could stay up here forever and just be red okay look out buddy I feel like my feet are going to be red forever. They will be. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of scrubbing. Like we've said, things will never be the same. But anyway, this is a cool spot. I'm going to chuck the drone up and just show you this dam because it's pretty beautiful. Hey, look at that. Tell you what, thank God for having grub rugs. The amount of uh, dust on the kids' feet it does wonders. And dogs, there. And dogs true. <laughs> you. All right, have a go at these. Which ones are these? Lamb? Mint and halloumi. Oh yeah. So, so I've just made like a quick tzatziki sauce. We're gonna have it with roasted um, capsicum, just simple burger, but should be pretty tasty. That was so good. It's definitely. <laughs> Right, so we've just gone through the township of Laura, uh, and that means no more dirt roads. We're done. So we've pulled over here, we've pumped the tyres back up. Um, now, one thing that I'm so glad that we have these days is our tyre pressure monitoring system. I check. Uh, it has been awesome having that the whole time because you set it when you drop your tyres down, you set it on the off road mode and it won't go off at you at all the time, won't beep at you, but you'll know what your tire pressures are, obviously. Um, and if you've got a slow leak or something happening, it's gonna warn you well before you destroy a tire, which happens so easily out on those roads on the PDR. Uh, the other thing I did while we're here is I chucked in our jerry can of diesel. Now we took that with us, uh, 20 litre jerry, because we just weren't sure how few and far the uh, fuel stations would be but to be honest it's really good up there i mean we get about 400 k's to a tank probably less up there when you're doing those dirt roads we just didn't even come close to needing it so i've chucked that in um and yeah we won't need that <laughs> for the rest of our trip really so yeah don't stress too much about taking extra fuel unless you've got a big big thirsty car but yeah we were fine anyway um Bit of a change of plan. Aaron. what are we doing? We're going to the lion's den. The iconic lion's den. Now, most people do this at the start of their trip because it's sort of on the way, but because we were shooting up so quickly, we're doing it on the way back. Yep. Now, the reason we're doing that instead of Cooktown is it's actually on the way. So, and it's a Saturday. No better night to go stay at a pub, hey? Mm -hmm. Well, here we are, the lion's den. So, this is unpowered. If we look over there, that section up there, and over, where am I looking? There and there, that's all powered, and crazily enough, it's all booked out, eh? Yep, we not didn't. even June yet. No, we weren't, we weren't chasing power, they just assumed, because we said we've got a caravan, they're like, ah, oh, you want power, but no. No. <laughs> so we're down here in the unpowered section. Um, how much was it? $46. <gasps> It's $15 an adult and then $8 for kids. I don't, eight. I don't know why I'm still shocked all the time. <laughs> it's just the area and the prices you pay, but we're just going to do the one night here. It's one of those sort of just have to come and see it and experience places, eh? Mm, yeah. But I can hear some water running and I've seen some people walking around wet with towels, so I'm pretty keen for a swim. It's pretty warm. Yep. Um, Hopefully we can take the dogs down there. Oh, yeah. Or we can put them inside. Hmm. And, um, and then we're going to go check out the pub because that's why you come here. <laughs> At some point, we're going to have a meal there, yeah. whether we're just trying to decide whether it's lunch or dinner. 
But hey, this is a pretty cool spot. Once again, it's nothing like what you picture it. No. Yes and no. Yeah. Like it is, or in the pub is pretty much exactly like you picture it, but oh, it's yeah. just like daily waters and all the rest of them. Like ah. Just hats and stickers and writing and everything everywhere. A good old country pub, eh? Mm. Well, it's funny. You see heaps of people put this on their videos as part of like doing the telly track and stuff. But so far away from the telly track. We are so far. It's crazy. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, oh no, this place is right near the telly or on the PDR. Nope. Got to drive the opposite direction. It's like 25 k's out of Cooktown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we made the call. Lunch here first. So we're going to, well, not going to, cooking up some burger patties. Have them on some something bread. What is it? Oh, some vlaki bread. I'll heat them up on the barbie too. Um, and then we'll go for a swim. And then later on, we'll have dinner at the pub. So we haven't been up there and checked it out yet, but don't want to go too early because we'll spend lots of money. So all the other videos we've seen with these um, swimming hole or this swimming hole, obviously later in the season, nowhere near as much water. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Right, uh, it's time to head down to the pub. I've been here for five hours and I haven't seen it yet, so <laughs> a little overdue. See you later, Lion's Den. That's a cool joint, hey? Yeah. Stayed up, we had a couple of beers last night. Not too late, though. Couple too many. Oh, I think I was all right. <laughs> you, you had a couple more than you normally would. I did, they were going down very easily. Yeah. Bit of a live music, it was cool. Yeah. Um, a few other, there was a heap of boys there on a big boys trip and they stayed up to the early hours. Yes, so. I woke up at midnight and I heard them carrying on still. Not too, <laughs> they weren't too bad. Nah, though. nah, they were being pretty respectful at Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna head into Cooktown now. It's only gonna take us about uh, half an hour to get there. And then we'll suss out where we're gonna stay. So this is where we've ended up, guys. This is called Cooktown Caravan Park. It's the first one on the right-hand side as you're driving into Cooktown. Mm -hmm. um, quite a small little park. Yes, it is. But very nice, very well maintained. It is, the owners were lovely too. Yeah. And um, well priced considering where we are. Yeah, it was $55 a night for power and water with the two kids. So that Similar was cheaper to than, Den. yeah, that was, well, that was $7 more than Lion's Den, yeah. which was just a patch of grass. Mm. But, Not complaining. Um, but, check yeah. out this pool area. This is really nice, eh? So we got the hot tip from, was it the lady at the caravan park? Yeah. Lovely couple they were. Um, they said come up to this lookout, Grassy Hill, and uh, watch the sunset. And today is probably the better of the days that we're gonna be here. It's still quite windy up here. We're not all the way up at the top because it was so windy. Oh, and we up forgot there. the dog's lead, so <laughs> we needed somewhere to park. Yeah, so we just parked over here. Dogs are in the back, they're chilling, they're all good. It's quite cool, obviously, as you can see, so they're probably nice and comfy in the back there. This is the first time I've put me flutter one in a long time. <laughs> Just because of the wind though. Anyway, we're gonna sit here, enjoy a beer, watch, watch the sun. Yeah, it's a beautiful view. Mm. Absolutely stunning. It is. So we just sat here and watched the sun go down, but a tour bus showed up. <laughs> now I'm waiting for them to leave to get the GoPro. Because <laughs> right over where they're standing. <laughs> they're literally surrounding the pole with the GoPro's <laughs> on. I've got my clamp um, mount on the pole over there and they're all standing around. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we'll wait. 
bit of a special day today. What is it? My birthday. How old? Ten. Double, Double digits. digits. <laughs> ah, first birthday back on the road, hey? How do you feel? Good. <laughs> Can't believe this one. More Lego. What one? Oh. Um, I don't know. I haven't even seen it. It's a Ministry of Magic! Yay! Yeah. Even has the telephone box. So the birthday girl has requested what we got for breakfast. Bacon and pancakes. It's their favourite combination for some reason. They don't have it with the maple syrup as is like the traditional thing, but pancakes and bacon is their favourite thing. So Alex has just dropped us off at the Cooktown Museum. We're going to explore that for Bella's birthday. He Obviously the dogs can't come here, so he's going to go back to the caravan park. He's got some stuff to fix up i don't know wiring or something he said he's doing so we'll just call him when we're ready and yeah we'll go in and have a little look apparently they've got like some cool james cook um and endeavor stuff here so we'll go check this out mm, so this building that this museum's in used to be um a convent pretty cool like I'll show you this old staircase it's pretty amazing <laughs> apparently they do paranormal tours and stuff here I would love to do that Is that something out of a horror movie or what? How's that? Really good. Ah, oh, here we are. So that museum was pretty cool. I especially love the old building. But now we're, oh, and special thanks to the lady. Um, she shouted the kids the pencil shop and she noticed we were buying coloring pencils. Wowzers! I'm literally blowing away. Um, yeah, so she was lovely. She made the kids day, Bella's birthday. So that was lovely, um, but now we're just going to go for a bit of a walk down the waterfront here. A little update on the black Sirocco fans. We're three weeks into our travel today and they do get dirty. It's not as noticeable as the white ones, but like, I don't know if you can, it's like pretty caked on there. So I'm going to give them a good clean because I can't stand looking at it anymore. Um, but yeah, good to know, even with the red dirt, like the white ones used to get like red all on here and it was I feel like it was a lot more noticeable so it's good on that side but yeah you're never gonna avoid it completely are you right we're coming back down to the waterfront here at um it's the harbour area they got this nice little drive that goes around most of the town and there's a fair bit to check out so we didn't do all of it yesterday I'm gonna finish it off today Is this where he beached the Endeavour? Yeah, right at this spot. Wow. Oh,
This is Anzac Park and they've got two very good condition looking tanks here. That is pretty cool. So this is Finch Bay and I'm sure it would be lovely on a lovely day but it's I don't know if you can see that <laughs> sand, sand whirly bird <laughs> over there. It is windy. It's pretty windy. <laughs> <laughs> this would be really nice though. Yeah, it would be. Awesome place. Like it's all nice and rocky and like palm trees and stuff over there. No camping here though. This is on the uh, western side of Cooktown. Yeah, so we stopped here for a bit of a lunch. We're contemplating going for a bit of a drive, maybe doing a bit of the Bloomfield, but I don't know, Bella's saying she's not feeling very well, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, sand in the face. <laughs> Righto, now that we are back off the Cape, we want to go through and just quickly show you what has worked, what hasn't worked with Big Bertha and the Ranger. Um, some things broke, some things went really well. We'll do a little walk around, just do a brief uh, talk about everything. All right, we'll start with the Ranger. Nothing went wrong with it at all. It's been a really reliable car the whole time we've had it. The, really, the only problem we had was the straps wearing through on the boat. We had one snap off. Granted, we did drive under a tree and it did grab, grab and snap it, but um, yeah, luckily mates had one of those. I'm gonna look at changing that setup and tying the boat down differently because we just keep breaking uh, straps there. Black Bear tires, they were amazing. Um, these are the new AT3s. If you saw our um, redo of the Ranger, we chucked those on before we came up here and love those tires, they're so quiet. Uh, great grip, dropped them down a little bit for the corrugations and uh, really, really good. All right, the old girl, Bertha. She went really well up there, really happy with her. Um, to start off with, lots of people ask about stone stompers and, and rock tamers, we don't have either. We just let the rocks spray. <laughs> they're just expensive and they're more weight. And uh, yeah, we just, we, we spent enough money, we didn't want to spend any more. So you can see we've got a bit of mud splatter. There are some little um, stone dimples up the cladding here, just from a few little rocks. You can barely see them. It's just like she got freckles now. It's just, it's just another feature, it's fine. Um, we did have to replace the rubber in our front boot. That's actually worked quite well. We've got hardly any dust in there. Um, one thing we did have a problem with was the rocks coming underneath. Now a stone stomper wouldn't have fixed that, but maybe rock tamers might have. So the rocks coming off the rear wheels of the car, we actually ended up smashing, hey Coopy. We ended up smashing um, a lot of my brand new grey water um, piping that I, I hooked up before we left. And if you get under here, Erin, you can see I did actually smash off the tap. So that's one of the taps to work the grey water. So we can't actually use that grey water holding tank at the moment, um, but I'll fix all that up later. Under here, um, we did the rocks as well. We smashed off this wiring here we broke those luckily i had some gear with me and um fixed that back up so it meant that electric brake wasn't working um tires and suspension on bertha so these bridgestone uh jeweler all terrains they were already on the van when we got it can't fold them they've been really good uh we dropped tire pressures about 10 psi all around because there is so much um going from sealed road to unsealed back to sealed and so on. Um, so we didn't want to drop it too far. Uh, the simplicity axle suspension. Now, a lot of people also ask, what have we done to the suspension to be able to take it up the Cape? Nothing. That is how the suspension came. It is fantastic. I, I, <laughs> you right, boy? Erin, <laughs> you, you even were a bit worried before we went up, hey? You yes. were concerned about this suspension? Yes, I just didn't, I don't know anything about it. To me, it was just another on-road van. <laughs> yep, so it's not, that's full off-road load sharing suspension and it was incredible. Yes, we have to level the van up. It's, it's like airbags are amazing. I'm not trying to say that 
those systems are no good, they are awesome. But this is a cheaper solution and it is really good. It handled all the stuff up there really well. Um, what else have we got? I don't know that we, I don't think anything else broke on the outside of the van. Not I think this we're, bag. Oh right? yeah. that. <laughs> so this bag you would have seen in the episodes, it fell off. I don't know how far we dragged it. We've got a bit of a hole underneath here. <laughs> but um, that's just on the side pocket. The rest of it's still working all right. Uh, the windows. So we did have trouble with the corrugations. The way these windows lock with the little latches inside, um, they came open a few times. So let a little bit of dust in doing that. Luckily we sort of caught it each time and um, I'll have to just figure out what we're gonna do with them because it, they're an older style window and I don't know how to stop them from opening. I mean, it didn't happen all the time, but it was just the really rough stuff. So that's about it for outside. It was pretty good. Let's go inside and have a look. Now, this, we're set up for travel at the moment, and this is how we travel. A lot of people ask about the coffee machine, how we strap it down. We don't. We, I want to strap it down. I just didn't have time, didn't get around to it. So it normally sits here. And then when we travel, we chuck it on the ground here with a blanket around it. Um, did unfortunately rub against this uh, drawer here and did wear a hole or wear a bit of paint off both the cupboard door and the coffee machine, which is a bummer. But anyway, it still works. Uh, the oven broke a little bit. So I think it's just a bit of old age and and um, yeah, it just didn't handle it too well, but that broke there. This came fully out, so the part of the lid separated. Uh, and the other thing was the grill. The grill uh, element itself fully fell off and was just dangling in there. I just fixed that up yesterday. It actually just needed to be um, slid back in. It was a little bit awkward, but you got it in, that's working. Um, and I just glued, I used a bit of silicon and re-glued this, so that's why that lid's working now. Um, what else in here, Erin? Um, the we lounge. We had those things come off. Oh, yeah. Like these things come off the blinds all the time. Yeah, they keep falling off all the time. I tried to put a little dab of silicon at the end of each one of the little hooks. It sort of worked on some of them. Some of them it hasn't. It's not as bad as it used to be, is it? No. Yeah. The lounge. How do you feel? I'll let you talk about this. <laughs> How do you feel about the lounge now after doing the cake? I love the lounge and I love like the job that Glenn and Heather did for us. I just wish I had picked a darker colour because <laughs> <laughs> the kids are just like, and the red dirt, they're just making it filthy. Yeah. Or like Meg got proper leather or something. I just got like a faux leather. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to look into how to clean that because. Yeah. And maybe they just scotch keep guard it, you said? Yeah. Yeah. So when we go into cans, I might look for scotch guard. So basically this spot here. It's really hard to see because the light on it at the moment, but yeah. But I don't know if you can tell. Like that's what it's supposed to look like in there, and it does not look like that anymore. Yeah. Kids putting their feet up on it. It's um, yeah. What do you do? That's all part of going the cake, though, isn't it? Yes. Um. Now, speak. Red, sorry, red yep. dirt is going to be our life yeah. forever now. <laughs> hey, we told you, Bertha will never look the same. <laughs> She's not going to. A lot of red uh, marks on the walls. We've wiped them down a thousand times what in hindsight maybe not the best option but it really opened the place up so I, I don't regret it it just means we've got a lot of cleaning to do um speaking of the dust dust reduction system so the mountain air dust reduction system uh you can see in here there is like a bit of dust build up from the unit working obviously there's somewhere just a bit of uh, dust came in around the filter but overall it did a really good job we didn't get dust in the main sort of cabin which is pretty impressive being a 24 foot van uh, now we did have the same problem that we had with the gator being an 18 foot fan and using the caravan sahara back then was around this door area the dust does come through the vent it is such a big vent i in hindsight, we probably should have still taped that up and covered it, um, but we just, once again, we're rushing, didn't do anything about it, and I really wanted to see how the unit worked. So, got a little bit of dust in the door there, and the fridge vents, another thing I should have covered up. Fridge vents, back of the fridge, dust came in, because there's just nothing stopping it. Positive pressure unit won't work behind a fridge because it can't push the air into there. So, any little gap coming from the fridge unit, like around 
all of our uh, like gauges and stuff here. You can see the dust there. And then um, in some of our cupboards, because they've got all holes for the power cables running through from the fridge. I've got a good one to show you. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> all that dust on top of our <laughs> containers. This knife drawer. Oh yeah, I've cleaned that already. Yeah, Alex has cleaned it, but yeah. it was like, everything it was, was dusty in there. So pretty much most of these cupboards are quite dusty. Mm. So. <laughs> Once again, that's a ceiling problem. Like a dust reduction unit will work perfectly in the open area, but anywhere that it can't push the air to, it's it does nothing to it. So yeah. you got to seal those up. So we we like a lot of people when they travel the Cape, they come into like a layer of dust on everything, pretty much. Yeah, bench we, tops are a big one. Yeah, we had a little bit, like tiny tiny bit which i was pretty impressed with as alex said given the size of the van mm. and that the unit is right down the end kind of in that little room so yeah. and you got to think too like a 24 foot van there's so many extra cubic meters of s space that it's trying to push in as well so yeah happy we've got that we we actually before those guys hit us up we actually were nearly not going to run a, a dust reduction system hey we had the Dometic one. Be before that though. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah we were nearly not going to have one. Yep. And um, so glad we did because, <laughs> yeah, that would have been hectic. Um, what else? This microwave hasn't really handled it with the shelf. Um, it's not spinning. The door gets a little bit jammed now, even though it opened perfectly then. So I might swap that out and fix that up later. Um, little things like our taps are leaking. That's not anything to do with the cape, but that's a something we should have replaced before we left. Just a wear and tear age thing. Um, the blinds, there's dust all over the blinds just from having the windows open in certain places. We did a lot of um, gravel pits on the side of the road. So obviously there's dust going around all the time. Uh, what else, Aaron? The fans. So a lot of people were curious about the, having the black Sorocos, whether it would stop the dust or anything. No, it's nothing's gonna stop the dust and the cobwebs on them, but it does hide the look of it, would you say? Yeah, I don't think it's as noticeable, yeah. like as in your face as a white one. Yeah, there's still as much dirt and dust on them, but you just don't notice it as much. So mm. pretty happy we went with the black ones. Mm. What else? Well, I really think N that's it. Nothing hey? really broke. Like I am seriously impressed with how Bertha went up on those roads. Um, oh, our roof hatch in oh, the yeah. bathroom. So the, the roof vent in the shower um that broke we couldn't wind it up and down so i just ended up pulling it apart and i fixed that up that wasn't really i don't know if that was from the corrugations or just a bit of a faulty unit but it's working now we are finding though that that one rattles open yes a bit yep so it didn't stay closed and every now and then this shower thing would fall out which thing this shower head oh the yep would okay fall out yep uh, okay, the battery system. I'll just turn around here. It's <laughs> a nice close angle. <laughs> <laughs> the battery system. Cut them. Cut them. I keep saying cut them with you. <laughs> Custom lithium 400 amp hour battery with our 1200 watts of solar on the roof. It's still very hard for us to properly comment yet because we were moving so often, weren't we? We mm. You're charging while you're driving. But in saying that, having um, 1200 on the roof with the DC DC charger, a short drive and we're full battery. Um, it's been really good. Really happy that we spent the money on that system because it meant we could just pull up anywhere and not stress about power. Um, quite, quite happy with that. There was even one day in Seisha, Seisha, Seisha. No, I still don't know how to say it, um, where I was running the aircon off grid for because it was just that damn hot up there and yeah. I was trying to work. Alex had taken the kids to TI so. I was running it, but it did drain a lot of power. And because it was very overcast that day, it wasn't really putting yeah. enough back in, but I never got the battery, like the battery still never got below 60%. Yeah, so. we're very realistic with the whole aircon off grid, especially with our older style aircon. We never set off thinking we can just sit here and run the aircon all day long. That was never the intention. It's just to run it every now and then, cool the van down and then turn it off because no matter what aircon you have they suck the power mm. so you can have like double the battery we've got you can have 800 amp hours or whatever but you're still going to 
deplete that battery fairly quickly and then you have to have a lot of solar or a fair bit of driving to build that um, battery capacity back up. So yeah, we're just realistic about it. A lot of people worried about that fire extinguisher oh, yes. falling. Yep. Has, hasn't moved no, at all. <laughs> has not moved a single bit. And the other thing was the uh, smoke detector. We used it to cover up our old wine guard hole, which was a great suggestion by a lot of people, but it just kept setting off with the um, with the stovetop all the time. So I've ended up moving it over here and I'm back to having to do something to cover that up. I thought I had more stuff to say. I thought more stuff broke, but obviously it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've just forgotten about it already. Yeah. Cleared it from our minds. Oh, some of these um, like plastic panels on the blinds broke yeah. just because they're only like a cheap PVC one. But I am finding that's really good for the wind. I was worried that like with big gusts of wind blowing through the window that they would be really noisy. But because they're so light, they don't really make any noise at all. Ah, they're really good. And for eight bucks a pop, we'll probably just swap them out when we get home because yeah. they're all red and dirty. <laughs> uh, so overall, Bertha, stoked with her. Mm. She did so well, um, really, really happy. Obviously a few little things to fix, but I don't think many people are gonna go up the Cape or on the Gibber River Road or anything like that and not break, break something. something. I yeah. think considering it's 15 years old or 18 years old or however old it is. It's 2008, quick maths. 15, <laughs> I think. No, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, She's it's old. old. <laughs> Older than the last one that yeah. we had. Um, I, yeah, I definitely don't think you could do it and not expect to have some little issues happen. Yeah. So yeah, we're stoked with how she went. Stoked we got her all the way up to the top, all the mm. way to Punzen Bay. Mm. A lot of people didn't think we would. Um, it, I tell you what though, there were, there were less capable vans up there. So if you're questioning whether you can get up there, just go for it. If you if you don't like, that's what we kind of have been saying. I don't want to be responsible for telling someone to do it, and they do it, and they <laughs> wreck their van. So I'll be responsible. You know, do you it. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> but um, like, if you start it, and if you don't feel comfortable, turn around and come back. Yeah, and look, it doesn't matter what you're in. There were the flashest of flashes vans up there, mm -hmm. and then there were people in a car with a tent. So, does not matter what you're in. If you want to do it, get out there and just enjoy it. Yep.